I want to get a spoon and start eating from that pot. Today we're going on a massive food tour all around the state of Perak in Malaysia. Get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena. And we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. We're excited to be taking you on a food tour in Taiping and the surrounding towns in the state of Perak today. Our first stop is a halal coffee tiam or a traditional coffee shop that has been here for almost a hundred years and we're here to try their famous Hainanese chicken chop. This is the Hainanese chicken chop. Let's see what this plate is made up of. So we've got a piece of um, pieces of battered and then fried chicken, some peas. There's a bit of slow, a bit of tomato here. These golden fried potatoes, some onion, and then it's all sitting in this sort of quite thick gravy. It is such an interesting dish. Let's just go ahead and try some before that chicken gets too soggy. All right, so I'm gonna get a bit of that chicken, douse it in that gravy, and get some potato and some peas, and give that a go. That was really flavoursome. So the dish is really simple, but the flavours really sing. So that fried chicken is really thinly pounded, so it's really tender. And then it's just got that nice sort of slightly crunchy but soft batter. That gravy is just um, pretty simple, but it adds like a, a real flavour, like a chickeny flavour. And then you just got these peas which are really fresh, and then that potato was so soft. This is such an interesting dish. I'm going to try some more. Let's go for some tomato this time. Mmm! Mmm! It's just a really simple, comforting, satisfying dish. And it's so not something that you would expect to find in Malaysia. Like, I didn't know that this dish existed before we came here. And I found out that the Hainanese, when they were here during the colonial times, they worked as cooks in a lot of the British households. So they would sort of adapt to recipes and Hainanese cuisine is quite fusion to Chinese, um, Western, Chinese, Indian. It's just really interesting food. That's really good. I've also got a dish you totally wouldn't expect to find here in Malaysia and that's mince on toast. This is such a childhood dish for me coming from New Zealand. So obviously in New Zealand we have a very uh, English influenced diet and this is such an English meal. But it definitely doesn't look like typical mince on toast. So it's actually chicken meat. So you can see the chicken there. Then there's lots of cabbage, carrots, there's some big peas, a huge bit of toast underneath which is almost like bread and it's all in a gravy so it's the bread's gone really sloppy and it's got this incredible whoa oh check that out wow it's incredibly cooked egg that's perfect so we'll just break that up let's just try some of this there's not much meat or mince but it's so different to what I'm used to like mince on toast for me as a child was always beef mince cooked in normally a, a tomato type um, base to it, not like this with just the vegetables. Let's try it. Mmm. Wow. <laughs> it's quite peppery. I'm gonna grab some more. The, the bread is, is actually just bread, it's not toast, so it's really quite stodgy. But a nice piece of bread, quite a sweet piece of bread. The gravy is sort of peppery. Mmm. It's a really good breakfast dish. It's really simple. The cabbage flavor is quite strong. That gravy flavor, with the, which is quite peppery. A sweetness from the bread. That perfect egg, the egg yolks just creeping through all the vegetables. So that's adding a nice creaminess. Very, very simple dish. No massively bold flavors. Such an interesting dish. It's really good. Perfect way to start this tour and to start the day because this is breakfast. That was a really tasty first stop. And Kopi Tiam are one of our favourite ways to dine in Malaysia. They're just so chilled, relaxed, 
almost nostalgic in their feeling. But it's time for our next snack. One of the most refreshing snacks or desserts you can find in Malaysia. Let's go and get some chendol. Chendol is the best dessert to cool down in the heat of Malaysia. It's a shaved ice dessert. So you can see the shaved ice here. These are chendol noodles, which are a rice flour pandan flavored noodle. It's all swimming in this beautiful creamy coconut milk. And then down underneath, there'll be some gula malaka or brown sugar syrup. You can just see the, the tone changing as I mix it up from that gula malaka mixing through it. Let's give it a go because it's rapidly, rapidly melting. All right, I got some noodles and some ice. Wow, this is a really good chendol. This store's been here for over 70 years and you can taste it, they've really perfected it. The coconut milk for me is the most important thing with chendol because if that's not beautiful and rich in flavor, the whole thing can seem a bit watery. Oh, but this is so coconutty, it's incredible. Let's get one more big spoon. Oh, look at all those noodles. All those pandan noodles, you can see the, the coconut milk just dripping off them. Let's get that in. Oh, a really floral taste to the panda. It's just a really sort of flowery taste. The noodles are very soft. This isn't too sweet, this chendol. Sometimes they can be very sweet from the sugar syrup, but this one is not very sweet. And it hasn't changed color too much, so it seems there's not actually much sugar syrup in this one. So, so refreshing. The only difference between my chendol and Thomas's is that mine has got these big red kidney beans in it as well. So I'm gonna give the bowl a bit of a mix up and then give that a try. All right, let's make sure I get some of those beans in there. Mm. Oh, this is so refreshing. And those beans add a real earthiness and texture to the chendol. You can also add sticky rice, which is called pulut here in Malaysia, if you want an extra bit of oh, So tasty. One of the best bits about chendol is watching it get made. You'll always find the stalls on the street front like this. So you'll see the ice machine, which is crushing that ice. And then an uncle like this, expertly putting the gula malaka and the coconut milk and those pandan noodles on top of the ice. Such a good dessert. Terima kasih, uncle. See you later. Jumpa lagi. Our food tour in Taiping today has a little bit of a running theme, and that is that everywhere that we're visiting seems to have a really long history. So we're at Malaysia's oldest coffee mill, and it's been around since 1933. We're here to learn how they roast coffee in Malaysia, and they do things a little bit differently. So the coffee goes through two roasting processes. So the first process has been done to these beans in that they've just been roasted. They smell so good. And now we're just about to watch the second phase of the roasting. So if you come over here, you can see that sugar is being melted over a wood fire and it's been cooked for about 20 minutes till it becomes a really thick dark caramel. The sugar's been cooking for a while and the coffee beans we've just added, they're coated in that dark, thick, almost burnt looking sugar. So that's gonna cook for another 20 minutes.
chips up into smaller chips and then they've poured them into the grinder and now it's being ground into a finer powder. The smell is just so aromatic, it's heavenly. After watching that incredible process, it's time to try the coffee. So I've just got a little cup of their Kopi O. So the O stands for original. And in Malaysia, Kopi O means black coffee with sugar. Let's give it a go. Oh, it's so sweet. Really, really sweet. But I'm not complaining about that. It's almost like a treat. It's so sweet. It's like eating a lolly. And the coffee itself isn't too bold, so it's not the strongest, fruitiest, boldest coffee. Let's try a little bit more. Oh, it smells almost buttery. Yeah, it's just a nice, simple, rounded coffee, a really good richness, and that sweetness is incredible, and you appreciate it so much when you've seen the amount of effort that's gone into roasting those beans. And that was like, there was still a whole nother roast before that that we weren't able to film. And then the growing of the beans, their beans come from, um, I think, Brazil and Indonesia. So they're beans from all over the world to create this incredible drop of coffee. And anyone can come along here and see what we've seen. This has all been free. So this sample is free and getting to watch them roast the beans. This is a really cool place to visit. Super interesting. Our food tour in Perak continues. We've just jumped into the car and we've driven about 20 minutes outside of Taiping to Kuala Sipitang, which is well known for mi udang or prawn noodles. Let's go and get a bowl. This restaurant's famous dish has just arrived on our table. Mi udang. So udang is prawns, mi is noodles. So look, there's one, two, three, or five massive prawns. Then you've got the noodles underneath, which look like a egg noodle. That's all swimming in a broth. We've got some spring onions, some chili, some fried shallots. I can see some celery, some carrots just floating around, or that might be just more chili. There's some cabbage, a whole lot going on there. And that's all swimming in this really thin broth. So let's try the broth first, just by itself. Wow, 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 wow. That's so, so prawny. It's so deep and rich in that prawn flavor. Oh, it's so good, it's so good. It's got a perfect spice level, a perfect sweetness, and then the prawn flavor is just, kicks you in the face, but in a really rich, creamy way considering the broth is really runny so it's not a creamy broth there's no coconut or anything like that in there but it has almost that creamy texture as if it does i can't get enough i, I could eat a bowl of that as soup it is so good there's this fly just keeps hassling me <laughs> all right let's try some of these noodles oh they're gonna be covered in that broth should be really tasty. Mm. Oh, coated in that beautiful broth. They're a little bit soft. I've still got a bit of chew, but because they're in the hot broth, they've gone a little bit soft. And you get little like flecks of all those vegetables. So that cabbage and that um, celery that's in there. I had a fried shallot in that mouthful. It was all crunchy. Oh, that broth is something else. I think, Sheena, you've got to try this and eat a prawn because you're missing out. Get in here, quick. After hearing Thomas rave about that broth, I have got to try a spoonful of it. Wow, it is so creamy looking. Mm, mm, that is a flavor sensation. It's so sweet, a little bit thick. And then it's just got that, just really infused with that prawn flavor. I'm gonna get in and try these prawns. They are massive, they're so big. I'm pushing the bowl away from me a little because 
I've made a bit of a rookie move. I'm wearing a white t-shirt and I just know I'm gonna splash that red broth all over me. So I'm gonna remove the prawn head and the prawn shell over here. All right, so just rip that prawn body off. The prawn seems like it's cooked really well. It's still, like it's not mushy. All right, let's give that a go. Mmm, wow. Our prawn is so fresh. Still has a little bit of texture, so it's not mushy. It hasn't been overcooked. And it's just so crisp. This bit, this prawn head, is gonna be filled with all those prawn oils. So I'm just gonna crunch on that and suck out all of that juice. Mm. Ah, like this is one of the best bits about eating a prawn, that head and getting all those sort of creamy custody oils out. Oh, this dish is a winner. We've just poked our head into the kitchen on the way out because we could smell the broth being cooked. There is this huge pot and he's stirring this thick, beautiful broth. I want to get a spoon and start eating from that pot. Incredible. We have just stopped at a roadside fruit stall selling durian and it is actually durian season at the moment in Perak. So we have bought ourselves a kampung or village durian to feast on. So as Sheena said, this is just a little fruit shack on the side of the highway. So we've pulled in, grabbed a durian and it's been cut up for us. So she said it was a kampung durian, so that means it's a village durian. So all, that also means you don't know what variety it is. It's just whatever durian fell off that tree in whatever village. So let's grab some off. Whoa, it's really, really creamy. So we've got one big lobe. Let's give it a go. Oh, that's delicious. Mm. It's really smoky, really creamy. Sometimes durian can be quite bitter. This one's not bitter at all. Wow. You can see on my fingers, it's like a, a, a custard texture. It's so, so creamy. There's almost no skin. Often the skin that you can kind of see here is, is quite prominent, but on this one, it just falls apart and Let's just grab one to show you. Look, I just have to touch it, and it just is absolute creaminess. Let's try a little bit more. Oh man, that is such a good durian. It's so neat to be able to sit by the busy road, eat the durian. This is great, and Parak is famous for his durian, so it's really good to have some while we're here. This durian smells so fragrant. I've just got to get in and sample it. Mmm! Wow! It's so custody and really sweet. Sometimes durian has a, an alcoholic taste. Not this one. It's so mellow and beautiful. So durian is a fruit and it's known as the king of fruits. It is a fruit that people love or hate. We love it because it is just absolutely incredible. It's so special. Tastes so unusual, almost savory, creamy, custody. But some people reckon it absolutely reeks and smells like dirty old socks. When you're here in Malaysia though, you have got to try it because it is incredible. I'm just gonna rip open the durian to get those last lobes out. Oh, look at that. That is gonna be the perfect way to finish this durian. Look at that big lobe, perfect. Durian was the perfect ending to this food tour day in Perak. We are road tripping all around Perak. There are gonna be tons more food videos to come, so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more food videos. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like, share this video and subscribe. We'll see you later. Jumpalagi! Jumpalagi! <laughs>